Welcome to Rolling On TV. This week, Jeff Johnson takes an in-depth look at the new Itasca Soleil motorhome. Then, we'll downsize a bit and check out the new Wildcat Max travel trailer. And what's RVing without some toys? This week, we'll look at buying the right kayak. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning, where available, is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. Class A diesel pusher motorhomes are becoming more refined all the time. They're equipped with the luxuries and amenities most desired by this type of customer. Well, the new Itasca Soleil motorhome from Winnebago Industries is a great example of this new crop of coach. Let's take a closer look. If it's a Class A motorhome you're after, Going with a brand like Atasca by Winnebago is a safe bet. Getting there is a big part of the fun in the Soleil. The dashboard is a familiar arrangement with sensible controls and enough easy to see gauges to monitor all important vehicle functions. An MP3 music player connector and Bluetooth cell phone microphone are part of the built-in electronics. The touchscreen radio includes rear and side view monitors and calls for some owner's manual time to understand its features. The passenger seat includes a flip-up table with a non-skid surface for convenient electronic device use. The coach is built on a Freightliner XCS chassis with a diesel pusher. Back there, we've got a Cummins 340 horsepower ISV engine backed up by an Allison 6-speed transmission. It's a terrific power combination. It moves the rig down the road with ease, and uh, the transmission has plenty of gears to make sure that we always have the best combination of torque and, and horsepower hitting the road. The coach rides on a new way air suspension system with airbags front and back. Airbags keep the ride smooth, take all the harshness out, yet they maintain a degree of control that's really nice. It's not at all mushy, it's, uh, it's a little bit more firm, which you know a lot of drivers kind of prefer, as I do, being uh, feeling like I've got a little more of a grip on the coach. Back roads and narrow bridges are no problem in a big coach for a moderately experienced motorhome driver. Our journey found us at Oregon's Odell Lake and the beautiful Shelter Cove Resort, a popular fishing location with a campground well suited to a full-size Class A. Maneuvering and parking a Class A requires some caution in planning ahead, but with practice and paying attention, it's not difficult. After setting up and plugging into the utility box, strangely located on the wrong side of the campsite. We deployed the slide outs and readied for a fun camping adventure. The full wall curbside slide out moves out about 15 inches. That's not much, but it's enough. Well, that 15 inches of movement on the part of the slide out may not seem like much outside, but inside here where it counts, it makes a significant difference in space. For example, here in the bedroom, you've got a wonderful wide aisle that lets you get access to this huge storage closet. It's about six feet long of hanging wardrobe space. That's a terrific amount of storage for people in a coach like this. And it also gives you access to the bed for making the bed and such. Speaking of the bed, this one is equipped with the optional Ideal Rest air inflated mattress. Each side has an adjustable feature here that allows you to regulate how firm it is. Well, Pam and I slept on this several nights, and unfortunately, we tried everything from high to medium to low. We could not find a spot in here that was comfortable for us. 
and that's just us, but we would probably prefer a regular mattress in place of this option. Now, another feature in this coach is wonderful drawer glides. These are on full suspension glides that let you get all the way to the back of the drawer. That's a typical Winnebago feature. And the cabinets are finished in coffee glazed honey cherry cabinetry. Well, I've got a few coffee glazed cabinets inside the house, but maybe not on purpose. But anyway, up here ahead a little bit for privacy. The bedroom can close off with the sliding pocket door. Operates well and it locks securely for travel, so it's not going to come open. This cabinet with the louvered doors here, just directly behind the refrigerator. Normally, you can select an option that has a stacked washer dryer in here. When you don't have the washer dryer, it's a terrific pantry storage space with adjustable shelves, which is nice. And we personally, we find the pantry space a little more valuable than the washer dryer. We can always do that when we're at a campground someplace. Another advantage to the slide out room is it gives you this wonderful wide aisle. This is more than 36 inches of space and you can actually have two robust full-size people passing in here without any problems. The extra wide aisle also gives you easy access to the bathroom here. The bathroom includes a ceramic toilet, stainless steel sink in, a, in the laminate countertop, plenty of storage space, and a full stand-up shower with a glass enclosure that has a really smooth sliding nice operating glass door. We'll continue our tour of the Soleil interior right after these messages from our sponsors, so stay tuned. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaCam, another great product from Thetford. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our closer look at the new Itasca Soleil Class A motorhome, a gem of a new RV. This particular coach has an option, which is a full-size residential-style refrigerator. Operates on 120 volts AC, so it only operates when you're plugged in or when you're using the uh, built-in inverter and the inverter batteries. Now over here on this side of the aisle is something, a feature that Winnebago's been using they call the One Place. And it, what it does is it contains in one space a bunch of vehicle control and monitor features, ranging from the slide out room controls down to the power management system, the inverter controls, and uh, the levels check, checks, water pumps, air conditioner controls, and so on. Very convenient to have it all in one place. Over here in the kitchen, which our family cook really enjoyed, by the way, we have a large size convection microwave oven, Whirlpool. It'll handle a pretty good sized bird in there if you fit it in right. Corian countertop with removable panels that cover up the stove so you can, if you're not using the stove, you have all kinds of extra storage space and working space here. Backed up by this grouted in tile, very classy looking backsplash arrangement. And up here, of course, you have the sink. It's covered up by a couple of panels that are removable. Again, you can put the panels in place, and that allows you to have all this working space for preparing meals. Most of our meals are done outside the coach, because we kind of prefer living on the outside and just doing a little bit of prep inside. But if this weather's bad, there's plenty of space inside for meal preparation. Now, one feature about this material, it's Corian. It's nice and classy. It looks good. But it has an interesting sort of a uh, pattern or texture, or not texture, but a, a pattern to the surface. 
that makes it look like it's always dirty. And this is something that several people have observed besides us, so it's not just us. We would probably, if we had a choice, select a different type of Corian for our counter. Now directly opposite the kitchen here is a storage hutch that also includes down below a garage for the inn table. Now that's simply a table that rolls out of here, parks in front of the inn lounge U-shaped dinette. And that table can set up with wings on both sides to make it into a good sized table operation that gives you plenty of working space or meal or fun or cards or whatever you're going to do. And the inn lounge itself is pretty darn impressive, so we'll go take a look at it. Now the inn lounge feature is a standard feature on the Model 34 coach. The Model 38 has a smaller four-person dinette. This feature, as you can see, is a gigantic U-shaped sofa. And by extending the ends with the, this mechanism, allows the ends to slide out, and you move the cushions, insert the, the, the removable piece, and you have a gigantic U-shaped sofa and lounge that has plenty of seating space for a lot of people. In this area, you have the usual features you find that are convenient. Uh, reading lamps overhead. And there's also very large, deep storage compartments. And storage, of course, is always at a premium inside of a coach like this. Now, Winnebago claims that this uh, in, in lounge sofa unit will be able to accommodate six people comfortably to eat and maybe eight people for a having fun, you know, environment. Well, we put that to the test to find out, and sure enough, eight people fit just fine. We invited over a few friends for a strawberry shortcake social and parked everyone in the inn lounge. The Soleil Galley provided more than enough working room for our cook's preparations. Enjoying the company of friends is one of the best things you can do in an RV. So here's to rolling on TV. Yeah. yeah. Yay. Thank you, rolling on TV. All right. Cheers. Back outside, we found the roomy storage bays handle a huge volume of personal cargo. Door and campsite power awnings provide extra cover when the weather gets bad. We set up our humble campsite and prepped a meal over the fire. Rotisserie chicken on the ouse pit and corn on the grill. There's a good dinner ahead. Well, both the passenger and driver seats turn around so that you have extra seating for people to enjoy the socializing in the rest of the coach. When the evening is late, your campfire is burned down, you're settled inside for the evening. Of course, uh, you reach over, turn on your fireplace. There's a little heater in here that cranks out some warmth to keep your toes warm as well. And then, uh, kick up your leg rest, lay back your recliner, and you're ready to enjoy an evening in comfort. And this is one of the fun things about RVs. For more information about the Itasca Soleil Motorhome, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. Coming up after the break, Jeff shows us the new Wildcat Max travel trailer. Is it now the perfect time to turn your old pop-up tent trailer from looking like this to looking like this? Treat yourself and your family to a bug-free camping season with a new tent canvas from Canvas Replacements. To learn more or to order a new canvas, visit canvasreplacements.com or call 800-232-2079. Be sure and visit the new RollingOnTV.com where you'll find weekly shows along with a selection of videos, stories, information, and the latest RV news. Our lifestyle pages are full of great stories about places to go, things to do, and what's new. Written by our viewers and RV writers from around the country. And if you're into great food and drinks, then visit our food and beverage pages where we'll get your taste buds up and ready for an Epicurean adventure. All this and more on the new RollingOnTV.com. 
Greetings, Jeff Johnston here. We're taking a look at the new Wildcat Max Model 23 DKS travel trailer here in the lot at George N. Sutton RV in Eugene, Oregon. The 23 DKS features a floor plan that's just taking off in popularity today. It includes a variety of features packed into a relatively small trailer that's comfortable being towed behind something like a half-ton truck, which fits an awful lot of people's vehicles. Smooth fiberglass skin gives the Wildcat Max a contemporary upscale image. It's big enough for comfort and compact enough for easy towing. Laminated construction and both aluminum and wood framing combine in a solid, durable package. The main awning doubles as a slide-out room cover. A rear vision camera is a fine safety item that also helps when backing up. Up to 250 pounds worth of firewood and other bulky items can be carried on the convenient fold-down Max rear storage rack. Other gear can be carried in the forward storage compartment. Built-in tool hangers are a thoughtful touch. There's more than enough space in this trailer for two people. Shaker-style hardwood cabinetry and brushed nickel hardware make for a fine residential image. This popular new floor plan has a master bedroom up front. The dinette is street side in a slide out room. There's a centered kitchen island and the rest of the galley is curbside in another slide out. The bath is positioned in the street side rear corner. Island style kitchens are popular in RVs today and the Max 23 DKS effectively uses this feature. Solid surface countertops and residential style fixtures are standard as are stainless image appliances. A wardrobe and storage unit is conveniently located adjacent to the trailer's front door. Huge windows, a tall ceiling and freestanding dinette table add up to a fun eating space that's unexpected in a smaller trailer. Users will find the corner bath roomy and accommodating. Curved sliding doors close off the modest size but functional shower. A TV, radio, and some storage make up the entertainment center. The usual shirt closets and storage nightstands flank the queen bed with Serta pillow top mattress, which has access via walkways on both sides. RVers looking to match a trailer to a half-ton size rig may find the Wildcat Max 23 DKS a decent pairing for family RV fun. For more information, log on to our website at rollinontv.com. Kayaking is a popular activity with a lot of RVers. Coming up next, we'll look at buying the right kayak. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. At Norco, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norco refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. RVers are always looking for toys to enhance their RV fun, and kayaks are at the top of the list. Let's join Steve Gibbons at Scapoose Bay Kayak and find out what we need to know before buying that first kayak. Kayaking is a great sport for RVers, and if you're thinking about getting into the kayaking RVing program, uh, here's some things to think about. The very first thing that you're going to want to do with any kayak is you're going to want to talk to somebody intelligently about what is the right kayak for your application. It isn't always about the price as much as it is the size of the boat and what you're going to do with it. Um, the worst thing you can do is buy a boat for $300 because it's a good price and then find out you don't fit in it or it doesn't work your application. 
The important thing that you want to look at is how the, how the boats are made and also what the weight is because the weight varies on what the material is. When you look at boats like these, very well made boats, but they're made by what they call a polyethylene. So to keep their structural integrity, they have to be thick and thickness means weight. When you go to other boats that look like this, they may also be made out of a plastic, but the design of the plastic makes them lightweight. As we get older in our years in RVing, we want to find kayaks that are going to be able for us to carry anymore. I'm not as capable of carrying 80 pounds as I am now of carrying only 40 pounds. And so when you look at a boat, you want to look at not only the weight, how you're going to carry that boat. Is it going to go on the roof of your truck? Is it going to go on your, air, on your RV? And that will also determine just how high you have to lift it or how you're going to haul it around itself. Um, there are tandem kayaks so that if two people want to get in one, they do make recreational, what we call a large cockpit tandem, and then they also make single kayaks. Sometimes a single kayak can have a small, what we call a keyhole cockpit, or they can have a larger cockpit. So dependent upon your own agility, whether you want to be able to have something that's easy for you to get into, or whether you want to have more of a racer type of a boat. One of the other things that you might consider is whether you want to sit into a kayak or whether you would like to sit on top of a kayak. These are literally known as sit-on-tops. This particular style is made by a company called Hobie, and why it's been so successful is that a unit like this will drop into it, and you actually can pedal it with your feet and then just steer with your hands. So it makes it very convenient for some of us, rather than having a paddle, you can also pedal it and steer. Whether you're going to go with a sit-on-top, a sit-in, a recreational, large cockpit, small cockpit, each one depends on different types of pricing. Least expensive boats will start somewhere in the neighborhood of around four, three to four hundred dollars, um, and then they work their way up. The price change is varied by the quality of the boat, the size of the boat, and also the materials that they use. And it's very important that you determine first how often you think you're going to use it. You might not necessarily want to run out and buy a two thousand dollar kayak if you're going to use it twice a summer. Um, sometimes it's a lot easier to buy something that's less expensive that still fits and then that will be your kayak. And if you like the sport, what you might end up doing is handing it on down to the grandkids and then you'll bump yourself back up into something a little bit, maybe more lightweight, a little bit more expensive, but a little bit more practical and usable for what you're now taking yourself up into. The other thing that you have to consider is that that kayak will go nowhere without a paddle and paddles vary as well. Paddles are really priced by weight as well as construction material. A paddle like this will cost you about 80 or 90 dollars, but it's going to weigh about 36 ounces. And although 36 ounces does not sound like a lot of weight, you can also buy paddles like this that weigh 24 ounces. But they'll also go up into the $200 range. One thing to consider when you're paddling a kayak is that this paddle is going to be in your hand every single second that you paddle, and weight will build up as you use it. So um, consider that as you pick your paddle. Another thing that is a requirement by law is that you must have an onboard life jacket. Good kayakers never take their life jacket off. They wear it all the time. But the law does say that you only have to have it on your boat. Um, they're designed to be large armhole, uh, large armholes. They're gonna also have soft straps. They're gonna be short so that when you sit in a boat, it doesn't come up and ride up on your face and give you what we call Winston Churchill looks. Uh, they range anywhere from $70 to hundreds of dollars, depending upon the sophistication of the jacket. But all jackets have to be Coast Guard approved and must provide and show a flotation characteristic that has to make it uh, proper, what they call a Type 3. Uh, there's also children's life jackets for some of the grandkids or your own kids that will need to have a life jacket as well. So once you've decided that you want to be an RVer and kayak at the same time, you can determine, first of all, again, the size of the boat that's going to be for your application. <clears throat> and then you get the opportunity of picking either sit-on-tops, sit-ins, thin, lightweight, thermal-form boats, a little bit heavier rotor mold boats, a good paddle, a life jacket, a whistle, and then go out into the thousands of places anywhere near the area that you might be that are great for kayaking. And again, always remember, safety first on anything that you do. Survey the water that you're going to get into to make sure that you understand what you're going to be paddling in. Let people know that you're out there. Regular safety tips as well for kayaking so that you can have a safe, great experience of RVing and kayaking across the country. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories, 
visit our new and expanded website at rollingontv.com. For the latest up-to-the-minute RV news, visit our media partners at rvbusiness.com. Looking to buy an RV? For one of the largest selections of new and used RVs online, visit our partners at rvt.com.